So after six years of splitting lanes between Ventura and Santa Barbara, California, I thought maybe I'd make a quick video and uh, maybe share a little bit of my wisdom, pass it along to you guys that maybe uh, you've just moved to California and um, quickly realizing that the only way to get anywhere uh, in a reasonable amount of time around here is to be on a bike and split lanes. So, uh, a couple things. Uh, first and foremost, in my opinion, uh, the biggest issue is disparity of speed. So when you're splitting lanes, you don't want to be doing much more than, say, 10 miles an hour faster than the cars around you. Uh, imagine hitting a brick wall at a 45 degree angle when you're doing 5 miles an hour, and hitting that same wall at a 45 degree angle when you're doing 30 miles an hour big difference so if the car's the brick wall and it's doing 10 and you're doing 20 then you're only hitting the brick wall at a 45 degree angle at 10 miles an hour so that's kind of the concept behind it try to keep it under 10 miles an hour uh, and usually over about 40 45 miles an hour i just get back in line there's nowhere i'm going that's that important that um, i need split lanes at that speed so uh, next thing is uh, a little bit about lane position uh, splitting lanes between the left two lanes is always the safest. If you've got three lanes, that would be between lane two and lane three. You want to stay away from the right-hand lane, or what I'll call lane one, because that's usually where cars are getting on and off the freeway, and there's a lot more going on. People speeding up and slowing down, and uh, just a good place to stay away from. Less chance of getting clipped. So those are the big things. Disparity of speed. Keep the difference down between you and the cars. Stay between the far left-hand lanes. So from there, we'll talk a little bit about bike setup. Uh, you can really help yourself out if you get your mirrors in the right place. Uh, usually, if you're going to clip somebody, it's going to be your mirror into their mirror. And what I've found works best for me um, is to move my mirrors out far enough so I can see past my elbows which uh, most bikes come stock with mirrors that uh, do just that, staring at your elbows. So you can buy extenders to move them out about an inch or so. Uh, that gets you by your elbows so you can see behind you. Uh, if you put them out any further than that, you're just asking for trouble, and you're going to run into people's mirrors and make your bike look like Mickey Mouse. What I do on my bike is I've got these little uh, wide-angle mirrors so you can see in your blind spots. Um, get them at the auto parts store and uh, double-sided tape them onto your mirrors. And you can put those out far enough that if you're going to clip a mirror, you knock that thing off and, uh, you know, just keep another one in your garage and stick it on when you get home. Uh, another thing with your mirrors is keeping them at the correct height. Uh, you know, cars are uh, pretty low and pickups are pretty high. So if you split the difference and set your mirrors um, above the height of the top of a standard car mirror, uh, I got one in your driveway, you can measure that. Uh, and the bottom of a pickup mirror, say like a Ford F-150 or something. So, uh, you know, put your mirror in there, put it out far enough so you can see behind you, get the wide angle mirrors and set them at the right height. And a lot of times you get in a tight spot between a car and a truck or two trucks or whatever, you can uh, go right under or over their mirrors and no harm, no foul. That's about it on bike setup. Uh, I'm not going to talk about, uh, you know, clutch control or covering your levers or, you know, what you should be doing while you're riding. If you haven't figured all that out by now, you shouldn't be splitting lanes anyway. And uh, from there, we'll just move on to what we do when we're splitting. You know, you're going to come up on traffic that's slowing down pretty quick, and you're going to need to get over there into that middle area. Uh, it's important that you don't have a, you know, car on either side of you that's going much faster than the lane that you're in. You don't want to pull out onto the white line, dash white line, uh, when you've got, you know, one lane almost stopped and the other lane still doing 70 miles an hour. Uh, not a good thing to do. You want to wait till both lanes are pretty well plugged up and then uh, start splitting from there. Try and make a smooth transition into between the two cars. The big thing to watch out for is people not paying attention. I don't really think there's anybody out there that's deliberately trying to get you. Uh, you know, there may be a few make their day a little better if they make yours a little worse, but I think for the most part, uh, if people are going to wander over towards you, it's just because they're texting or not paying attention, drinking their coffee or whatever. So, uh, you know, I do get that once in a while. A car comes over and I have a bit of a close call. I don't go flipping them off or anything. There's really no need for that. 
uh, you know, you're in their space basically, and it's not their responsibility to be staring behind them all the time to keep an eye on you. Uh, other than that, there's not too much to it. Watch your speed, watch those mirrors, watch for uh, drivers that aren't paying too much attention. You can usually tell if they're looking down and texting or looking up in their mirror or whatever they're doing. If they're getting ready to change a lane, usually they're looking in one of their two mirrors. And if you keep an eye on their head and their steering wheel and their front wheel and you're paying a good amount of attention, you can see what they're doing before they do it um, and slow down, speed up, whatever it takes to get away from that situation. Sometimes speeding up's a better idea. If it looks like you can time the gap between two cars a little bit better by getting on the gas and pulling up a little bit and avoiding it that way, go for it. Uh, on the freeway, slowing down is not a good thing, so I usually go for faster instead of slower first. Uh, you might be able to get away with something quicker by jamming on your brakes, but then you're hoping everybody behind you is paying attention to what you're doing too. So the last thing I wanted to mention was uh, the fact that you may have other riders uh, going faster than you or slower than you, and they're splitting lanes as well. Happens on a regular basis for me. Uh, if you came up on a guy that was going slower than you, uh, you know, a tendency is to get a little impatient and want him to get out of your way. But remember, he's got to pay attention to what's going on in front of him. He doesn't have a lot of time to look back in his mirror. So it might take him a while to notice you're back there. Uh, you can beep your horn, rev your motor a little bit. Um, you know, you're probably going to scare the car drivers a bit. Um, I tend to just stay back there and wait till the guy sees me and uh, usually uh, they realize that they're going too slow and they'll get out of your way. Um, same can happen to you. You look back in your mirror and there's a guy on your tail. You don't know how long he's been back there. I just try to find a safe place to pull back into traffic without uh, putting myself at risk and let him go by and have at it. Uh, there's a lot of guys go a lot faster than I do when I'm splitting, but that's uh, kind of a comfort zone thing for everybody. So be aware that there might be bikes uh, coming up behind you and be courteous to them, uh, just like the cars have to be to you. So that's about it. I'll wrap it up and um, hopefully more videos to come in the future and stay safe out there.